Okay, welcome back. This is going to be the last video in this series, I think, uh, unless I get requests to do more about how to do extra functionality using Ink and GD. Um, but for now, I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of like a wrapping up of what we can do to kind of close out um, the way that our visual novel is displayed and to think about how we could do something like a scene transition based on, you know, the ending of a particular line of dialogue or a particular uh, story line that you've lo loaded in here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a, a new button um, that will kind of close out uh, the interface of the conversation that we've seen here. So in my color rectangle, and I'm actually going to add this uh, in the choice container that I have here. And so I'll uh, add a new node and I'll make a button, something like that. And I will you know, say that this button is the kind of close button. And I'm going to make this flat. I'm going to put the text in here to be, uh, you know, and something like that. Or maybe I'll put it in little brackets there to indicate that, you know, this is kind of a command, if you will. So I'm just loading in a custom font, right, to make sure that this is just a little bit more legible. Okay, and I'll make this something like 24. I think that that's the size of my other buttons. Okay, um, I'm gonna make the colors be like this and make the, I guess I don't need it to have the hover. I think that by default, that's fine. So let's just, Okay, well, it gets pushed to the side because uh, if we look in our remote here, right, we're using our choice container to do that. So when we load these other choices in here, right, it obviously moves uh, the close over to the side here. But I just want to make sure that this is a clickable object. Great. So I'm going to make this close choice, if you will, uh, be invisible, okay, because I don't want this to be visible and also to be affecting our choice container that we have here. So I'm gonna make sure that it's not visible and I'm gonna use our GD script to make this visible when we're ready to basically end the story, okay? So we already have this functionality in place here, right? We have, you know, if the ink player has choices to do this stuff, but if it doesn't, then we're going to say, when it reaches to the end, we're going to get that selector and we'll say that this is visible, okay? And then we can obviously say, I'll set that to true, obviously. And then we can send a signal here that when this is uh, clicked on, that we then, you know, uh, do something with the rest of our code. So we can say color rect dot connect. And again, you might prefer, you know, loading in a variable here since we're kind of calling it more than one time. That's totally fine. I'm just using selector. So I'm going to say pressed. Let's have this be to self and then close uh, button, something like that. And I need to make sure that this is going to be right a string. Okay, so I'm going to maybe come down here and I will create that new function of close button and I will basically just you know turn off our color rectangle right uh, and maybe I'll also turn off the male and female icons so I'll say color rect dot visible equals false and male visible false female visible false. Okay. Now you can obviously do something a little bit more complex here. You could add an animation that plays, you know, kind of a slow fade. You can do some kind of screen transition. You know, you could do a lot of different things here, uh, depending on what you decide. Um, but before I kind of try to execute this code, I need to go back over to my ink story and make sure that I modify my story so that when I have no more choices that I'm not actually having a button to end the story. Uh, but it, that it actually kind of comes to a natural conclusion. So let's do that really quickly. So down here at the bottom of the story, I'm going to go to, you know, 
gotta go, right? Instead of having a choice that says end, I'm just gonna have this go to the end, okay? And because I don't have any branches or choices, then the script that we have in Godot will, right, since I don't have any choices, it will go to this else statement, which will then activate this close button, which when we click on it, should hypothetically turn off these things. And also, I should note here while I'm thinking about it, it should also turn that choice button also off. Cool. Now, you could obviously decide here that you want to do Q free or something like that. That really depends on how uh, you want to structure and program uh, this particular level or this particular scene. Um, but let's go ahead and just see how that looks. So great, we get our nice reaction, we return to default. Again, we haven't programmed anything here. I should go, our end, right? Ah, I actually realized that we didn't actually save uh, the story correctly to re-import back into our game. So let's do that really quickly. I'll go back to ink, I'll go to file, export to JSON, and I will make sure that I'm writing that to the same location of my resource folder replace it. So I'm overwriting that. And now let's try again. Great. Continued. Excellent. Continued. I should go. Huh. You know what's happening here is that because my close button is part of this choice container, it's actually being destroyed in my select choice. So what I probably want to do is that I'm going to move this outside of that and just have it to be a child Right, so it's in the same location as my choice container, right? But it won't be destroyed. So now that I've moved that to just be a child of my color rectangle, I also need to change the selector that I have here so that I will properly get that node. I think I also need to do this right down here in my close button function. All right, let's try that one more time. Okay, our end is visible. We close that, and now, right, our scene is complete. Excellent. So again, you can obviously come in here, do a lot more formatting in what this close button is doing. You can add an animation, you can change your scene, you could have a timer that does something particular that when that timer times out, you can go to a new scene, you can load something else, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I'll leave that up to you and up to your own experiments and uh, particular scenes. And I hope that this series of tutorials has been helpful for you for understanding how to get an ink integrated into Godot. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post a comment below. And um, thanks again so much for watching. Have a good one. Take care.